If ye love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude, than the animated contest of freedom, go home from us in peace. We ask not your counsel or arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains sit lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you are our countrymen. Listeners and subscribers, thanks for joining me. So, <laughs> let's face it, I'm going to step on a few toes here, which, if you think about it, isn't even all that hard to pull off today because we're living in the age where many will be offended, and for many reasons. And the truth, the truth can even offend people, if you can believe that. But it's not lost on me that we are dealing with a loaded topic here on this channel, and that's per usual and that the passions and tensions are running high right now while the logic and rationality, they're just scampering off in the opposite direction. And you know, the normies, they just, they flame over content like this, right? But here's the thing, there's trying to keep you safe and then there's overstepping authority and abusing power. And I think it's easy enough to recognize that this virus was used as policy fodder and that policy is raised to the level of constitutional abridgments. Yet for the bulk of people it seems okay they're willing to accept tyranny over the tranquility of liberty and as we know or as we should know all it takes for tyranny to take a foothold is for the upright citizens to do nothing and comply because safety is being used as an excuse to lavish us with the very restrictions they wanted on us anyway okay and the lion's share of people seem to have seized on how folks are dying from this virus when if they were wise They'd start considering how to live with this virus going forward because it's here to stay. There's no arguing that. So we need to stop the fear porn and scaremongering. Yes, sadly, some folks are getting infected and becoming severely ill because of it, but it seems that people are willing to allow their officials to do anything to curb that, even killing people, to prevent the virus from killing people. And that response has been nothing short of a disaster, okay? People are still dying. Citizens have been made virtual prisoners in their own homes. Liberties are being ignored, and we're plunging deeper into a recession. Actually, here's a fun fact. There's more unemployed people in the U.S. alone than there are sick and dead uh, from COVID around the entire world. So, you know, just let that soak in. And the survivability of this thing is so high and the illness is so mild for the bulk of people apparently that purportedly uh, three million New Yorkers came down with the bug and already recovered okay Boston San Francisco Chicago Seattle it's all the same thing they all purportedly had thousands upon thousands of citizens come down with the bug and then recover it's amazing but no it's not lost on me that there is a small group of high-risk individuals that aren't so lucky which COVID could potentially cause severe illness in and I emphasize potentially because that's what all this is. None of this is a given. You might get COVID, in which case you could maybe transmit it to somebody else who'd perchance pass it to a high-risk individual who could possibly become severely ill and then potentially die. There's an awful lot of restrictions for an awful lot of chance. But nevertheless, yes, that small but high-risk group of people should indeed have the freedom to take the measures they feel are necessary. However, if people can and still are getting sick regardless, then what does foisting everyone into compliance and wholesale achieve? You know, that's actually a burning question I've had, and it's just been bugging the heck out of me, so maybe some of my viewers here can help me out. The folks not wearing face coverings to one degree or another apparently aren't too concerned with getting sick, right? I mean, I think it's safe to estimate that much because it's not like they don't know the risks. I mean, how could they not? We're constantly waterboarded with the risks ad nauseum day in and day out again and again and again and again. So they know, we all know, what business is it of yours or mine if these people don't care about contracting COVID? And it's not like these people are guaranteed to get sick in the first place, nor are they guaranteed to sicken someone else, especially not if that somebody else is taking all the proper precautions, right? So riddle me this. If you are taking all proper precautions to avoid getting sick or sickening somebody else, well then there should be nothing to worry about, right? But if you can contract COVID, regardless of the measures and precautions we take, then what are we all doing being forced to abide by something that doesn't work? Why are we letting the world fall apart? Because let's say, God forbid, you have a pre-existing condition, you're immunocompromised, or you simply just don't want to get sick, or maybe somebody in your circle fits that criteria. I don't know, okay, a grandmother, a young child, whatever. What the heck are you and your grandmother and young child doing at my local bar then? The movies, the gym. By all means, stay at home and suit up. Because if you and yours are doing everything right, then you and yours should be okay. And again, if not, then we don't need to be incarcerating, locking down, finding and shooting people over ineffective measures, then do we? I'm just saying. 
Besides, it's not really the government's job or business to interfere and disrupt commerce, okay? Their first duty is not to ensure safety in workplaces, it's to uphold the Constitution, which they've been failing at miserably. But now that we know this thing has spent time in a lab, <laughs> and don't think it's just the Wuhan lab either, we can safely say we're looking at the age-old Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution, right? Create the problem to foment a reaction to which you already have the solution to. Problem, the coronavirus, reaction, do something about a solution, oppressive and totalitarian measures guised as aid that they've wanted to foist on the people all along. So this is just yet another saga as an ends to a means, and it won't be the last. So yes, it's time to quell the taxpayer-funded gravy trains and these agenda-serving actions and narratives. California Carter, signing off. Mm -hmm.